Let's get to the news we saw off the ice yesterday, and it was significant. The Vegas Golden Knights have locked up Noah Hannafin. They acquire him at the deadline from the Calgary Flames, and yesterday it was announced he's got a shiny new eight-year extension to remain a Golden Knight through the prime of his career, a 735 million dollar cap hit for Hannafin as well what did you make of the value here and what do you make of Vegas locking up their guy after getting him at the deadline I think the value is spot on I think the Calgary Flames had extended an offer of eight years times seven and a half million bucks I don't think they were willing to go north of that so some would say oh he took a slight discount in Vegas but when you actually size up the net of the deal based on Vegas or Nevada, excuse me, being a a no state income tax state, what you're talking about here is Noah Hannafin, even though he takes less in gross pay, pay, in net pay, he's going to get an additional 6 million bucks based off of what he would have earned in Calgary. So that's a big deal. Um, It seems like he's been a pretty good fit in Vegas. Obviously, they go out and spend the assets to get him because they thought that they would have an opportunity to re-sign him. Took a little while to materialize. I'd say, based on the film that we broke down with our guy John Goyens earlier in the week on Vegas, I'm not entirely sold on him running their power play based on some hiccups that they've had. But really, when you look at this, and I saw some commentary on social media, I did Calgary Radio this morning, and people are like, how does Vegas get away with this? What's happening? And I'm like, guys... This there's there's nothing offside about the Vegas Golden Knights re-signing Noah Hannafin. They're basically taking the 5.2 million bucks that's coming off the books from Alec Martinez and sliding that to Hannafin plus half of the salary cap increase that's coming this summer. That's 4.3 million dollars. So that's Hannafin right there, and you've still got another two million bucks of the increase to play with. I don't know that that gets you Jonathan Marcheseau re-signed, who's had a fantastic 40-plus goal season again. But when you look at Marcheseau and him turning 34 next season, maybe after this playoff run, they just decide to shake hands and say goodbye to another golden misfit like they did with Riley Smith last summer. Different situation because they trade him. But you can't afford to keep everyone. And at 34, even though Marcia so has been outstanding this year, either that, or maybe they've got something else up their sleeve. Yeah. Unless they know something about their roster, about a player that maybe we don't, but when you go look at it look at that roster as well, Frank, like outside of the pending UFAs, if it was like, okay, what are, are there any bad contracts that they could maybe look to move to get some cap space or anything like that? I go through that roster and I just, I flat out don't see any, I know they have, the LTIR space that could potentially be a factor for them to play with. But I look at that. I don't see a piece on on that right now on that team that they're going to be looking to move on from magically in July. And it does feel like they've in a way chosen Hannafin over Marsha. So, and I don't know that blue line is really damn good. So it's hard to argue against that decision. Loyalty aside. Well, that's been their biggest thing that I've applauded them on the whole time. It's earned them a ton of criticism that they just say goodbye to Players that have meant a lot, whether it's been Paul Stastny or Marc-Andre Fleury or whoever it might be over the years, Max Pacioretty, they, they're willing to jettison guys that they feel like have sort of outlived their quote-unquote useful life in Vegas. And that's hard to do. It takes balls the size of a dump truck. And I think that's basically how they've managed this team to this point. They don't leave any stones unturned. and. There's a reason why they've had as much success as they've had is because they're ultra aggressive both in acquiring, but that also means you have to be ultra aggressive in dumping guys off of your roster. What's up, hockey fans? If you enjoyed that video, then you need to be hitting the subscribe button right here at Daily Faceoff. Exclusive interviews and analysis from our hockey insider, Frank Saravalli, fantasy updates from Brock Sagan, and a daily live show at noon Eastern, Monday through Friday. You don't want to miss any of the fantastic content, so hit that subscribe button.